Hey, welcome. I'm Tom Sinclair, and this is Streaming Idiots. If you were tuning in looking for something else, you need to change the channel because this is it. This is Streaming Idiots, and this might be as good as it gets all day in this show. For the folks that are watching uh, live, welcome. Glad to have you with us. Uh, the chat room's filling up. It's delight delight to see all you guys and uh, and ladies there today. And uh, Jill is, is joining us in the chat room. And for those of you watching on YouTube, thanks for watching. Thanks for, uh, for popping in and spending some time with us. We hope it's worth your while. The show goes about 30 minutes. <laughs> so if you make it to the very end, there'll probably be a prize for you. Actually, if you make it to the very end, you probably need to subscribe because that means that you're, uh, you're, you're going to join us and be a streaming idiot too. Interesting show this week. Um, golly gee. Got new lighting in the studio, so if I look a little washed out, it's because I haven't dialed it in yet. Um, got to, I've got a rant about Windows 10, and you know I thought I'm not going to be that kind of guy, but I am going to be that kind of guy. And I want to, uh, and and I've got uh, a, an update on our camera camera uh, mounted monitor project, and a new magazine that's come in. And then if we have some time at the end, I want to show you a quick, well, it's 10 minutes, and you can probably go watch it yourself, but, but the guys at vMix just put up on YouTube a new tutorial about shortcuts, and it's really pretty good. So if we don't get a, a chance to show it, I'll, I'll at least point you in that direction. So uh, let's dive in. Let's get the doggone rant out of the way right off the bat. Deep breaths, everybody. I am so disappointed. My production PC for, you know, back in the days of that Vid Blaster guy when we started in July of 2012, my production PC was a Windows 7 second generation i7 processor. That's the uh, i7-2600K. And it was, uh, you know, tweaked a little bit, overclocked. I think the normal on that one is like 3.4 or something like that. Uh, gigahertz, and we tweaked it up to about four, and we're getting some pretty good success out of it. And you know, had a solid state hard drive and a bunch of RAM and all all that good stuff. And Windows 10 came out, and I thought, now I'm not, you know, I want to, I want to wait, you know, let it, let it, let it mature like a fine wine <laughs> or a dirty diaper. Um, and uh, and in the meantime, I got a um, I was working on a project, and so I had to get a laptop that would stream. So I got that Asus ROG, Republic of Gamers, uh, gaming laptop, that big monster, because it had Thunderbolt port. And that's when we were working on developing the Bolt 4 um, Thunderbolt attachment that allows you to bring in four cameras, HDMI or, or SDI. And, uh, and it's a great, great project. If you're interested in that, shoot me a note, Tom, at easternshorebroadcasting.com, or just go to the website, and the Bolt 4 is on the website. Anyway, so we had that, and it was Windows 8, and I just, I detest Windows 8, and so I up, immediately upgraded to Windows 10. I thought this is a great opportunity to do that. It's not a PC that, you know, I have to have. Um, it's not my email PC, which is still <laughs> Windows 7. I think it started with Windows ME or something like that years ago. Anyway, the, um, no, that was a different laptop. Anyway. So I have Windows 10 on this ASUS laptop. I got Windows 7 on my production PC and on my email PC. And so about, oh, I'd say about September, October, I decided to, uh, to bite the bullet because I got, kept getting that doggone pop-up that says upgrade to Windows 10 and, and, and upgraded to Windows 10. And hey, you know, this is pretty cool. It's a little different. It's a little clunky in some ways with the tiles. You know, they had to try to keep those tiles in there somewhere. And, uh, you know, once you kind of get it organized, it's, it's all right. And then there was the day, January 27th, 2016. Something got installed on my PC, not by me. Apparently, in Windows 10, and I already knew this, but I didn't realize the consequences of it. Apparently in Windows 10, you cannot, like you can in Windows 7, you cannot tell it, don't, up, don't download any updates and install them. Let me choose. No, Windows 10 
wants to do that all by itself, or if there's a way to do it, it's buried in there where I couldn't find it. So on January 27th, 2016, Windows did something. They updated with something, some nonsense that they put on there that created a mess, at least for me. Now, maybe for everybody else in the whole world, it wasn't a problem. And this is how the mess manifested itself. I would start vMix, and I always run my CPU monitor, the little task manager, to keep an eye on it because in, in vMix, you know, it, it might say, hey, you're using, you know, 30% or 20% or something like that. In fact, let me pop, pop this up right now and see. Um, vMix, yeah, right now my CPU says we're doing about 58%. vMix says, hey, we're doing 25%. We're happy. Yeah, but the vMix CPU meter doesn't tell you the whole story. It just tells you part of the story. Well, what it didn't tell me was the first show after January 27th, when I started recording and streaming, my CPU went pow, 100%. And I didn't catch it right away. I mean, it wasn't something I was looking for. And when I went back to test it, I fired up vMix, looked at the CPU, and it was good. It was no problem. So I loaded my profile. And then the profile for this show, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not that crazy, but there are four or five cameras, and there are a bunch of overlays, and some videos, and some pictures, and, you know, you get the message. There's a lot of stuff. And by the time I'd loaded this profile, CPU was starting to, to get up to like 60%. That's without streaming or without recording. That's why I was hitting 100 when I started streaming and recording. And I looked in there, and there was something called system and compressed memory that was a process that was running that was eating up 20 to 30 percent of my CPU. And so, you know, my first thought is, okay, Google is your friend. Let's do a Google search on system and compressed memory CPU. Well, I got 32,600,000 hits. And I think I read most of them. <laughs> but, but everybody was shrieking about it was either blowing their memory out or blowing their CPU out, and nobody could find a way to disable it. And I know I've, I've fussed at you guys in post-show the last, oh, probably the last six weeks about this thing. And y'all had some great ideas about how to fix it, which apparently worked for other people, but they didn't work for me. And I finally after all this frustration, decided to revert back to Windows 7. Well, guess what? <laughs> if you don't revert back to Windows 7 within, what is it, 30 days? Then you can't do it. And I knew what that meant. That means something different for me than it might mean for most people. Most people would say, oh, well, just, I'm just, you know, get your Windows 7 disks and, and just reinstall Windows 7. Yeah, well, my Windows 7, it's Windows 7 Ultimate. I don't even know that they make it or sell it anymore. But it was a gift to me from Microsoft back in whenever Windows 7 first came out. You remember when they were having the Windows 7 introduction parties? Well, I had one. It was virtual. I invited all my online friends. <laughs> and so they sent me Windows 7 Ultimate. And they sent me crepe paper uh, decorations and all sorts of stuff for the party. It was a lot of fun. But that Windows 7 is so old. I knew, and I was right when I installed it, that I would have to update. I think the last time I counted was about 350 updates to get Windows 7 up to today's Windows 7. So I knew when I had to take Windows, 7, Windows 10 off and put Windows 7 on that it was going to be a major deal. Um, and I said, you know, this is a great, great chance just to go back to scratch, install everything fresh, because I'd never done that. And uh, did I do it? Did I, I think, it, did I do it before last week's show? I don't think so. I think this is the first show since we're back to Windows 7. And uh, yes, we are. That's right, because last week I remember fussing at myself internally because it was 100%. So now we're going... Windows 7, overclock to 4.2 gigahertz or something like that, that good old trusty 2600K second gen. See, I'm a cheapskate. You don't have, I like to have the latest, greatest, fancy stuff, but you don't always have to. You can make do when you need to make do. 
the camera for this show today. It's a Canon Vixia. I'm going to tell you all my secrets now. Canon Vixia HF200. Got it off of eBay for, you know, is it what I think I, ooh, I probably overspent. It was about 175 The Canon Vixia series now is up to the H, HFR700, I think, is the last one I saw on Amazon, which means the 600s are going to get cheaper, which means the 500s are cheaper and the 400s are cheaper, et cetera, et cetera. There was a, 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 a sensor size change from the 100s to the 200s. So if you're on the bubble about the 100s to the 200s, go for the 200 because the sensor is a little bigger. Still means you get 1080p, it's just better 1080p. 1080p is not 1080p, you know? So anyway, that's my rant about Windows 10. Doggone it, give me the right to decide whether or not to choose my updates. And then if you make a mistake, Windows 10, like you did, fix it. Doggone it. I waited, I don't know, six or eight weeks and there was no fix. And, you know, there's no communicating with Microsoft. It just ain't happening. So, and if this show all of a sudden disappears, it means they figured out how to cut my Windows 7 right in the middle of a, right in the middle of a show. Yeah, Jill says in the chat room, you can tell that to Bill Gates. Yeah, I don't think he's running the show anymore. That may be part of the problem. So anyway, system and compressed memory, that's what bit me in the fanny from Windows 10. And, and I now will no longer recommend or even mildly suggest that you upgrade to Windows 10 for your streaming PC. Heck, I think the TriCasters, which run Windows behind the scenes, I think if they still do it, I think they're running Windows XP. Um, so there is nothing good that I can say for Windows 10. Although, I, I will say one good thing about it. My wife had Windows 8.1, and she, she hated it, and she fussed, and she fussed. And so finally, I upgraded her to Windows 10, and she loves it. So for her, it was perfect, but she's not streaming. She's not stressing it. She's not making the CPU and the memory work real, real hard, where Windows tries to come in and save the day and compress all that memory. Ah, it's not going to work. Not going to work. Not going to work. Windows 10. Yeah, and Tommy's saying in the chat room, he's, he's, got, he's got hardware that won't work with Windows 10 because they don't have drivers for it. Yep, yep. Go back to Windows 7. That's my recommendation. So did I cover all my rants? Yeah, I did. I did. So what's my CPU use on, uh, on system kind of stuff right now? Uh, let's see. It is like... Uh, Hmm, 2% maybe? Huh, how about that? Yep. Percentage of time processor is idle, 45%. I like that. That's better than zero, like it was before. So, that's the deal, guys. Windows 10, at least for streaming. I wouldn't do it. Wouldn't do it. Yeah, I've, I've now created a firestorm in the in the chat room. Everybody's beating up on Windows 10. I don't blame you, man. I'm going in there too, <laughs> beating up, beating them up. Um, let's change gears for just a second and talk about a visual image. If you haven't already noticed, and I bet a bunch of you have because you're pretty sharp, you've noticed that there is a little line right there. You see it now? Maybe you weren't paying attention to it before. And that little line is an area. Oh, yeah, it's even more when I turn my chair this way. Kind of depends on the light reflection. That is because I have redone the lighting here in my studio. I haven't redone it. I've um, supplemented it, added to it, tinkered with it. Windows 10 was not enough. I had to go fix my lighting, too. <laughs> so, let me show you what it looks like now. And, uh, oh God, I hate to show you this picture because it's such a mess, but here goes nothing. So you can see immediately the two umbrella lights. That's the, those are the additions. Still got the side lights. All of these are, uh, yes, Tommy, that was the edge of my side table. All of these are LEDs. I've got uh, the equivalent of 75 
watt LEDs, which I think are really brighter than 75s in incandescence. It's 1100 lumens per light here on the right and left. Um, and there are 3000 Kelvin temperature. And then here, this kit came from Amazon and I'll, I'll put the link to it in the show notes. Uh, it was only $39. I thought that was really reasonable. And, and, and popped it in and the bulbs were really dim. So I swapped out some of them and they were look, these long spirally CFLs. They said 400 W on them, which I know didn't mean 400 watts in, <laughs> in CFL language. They were probably like 45 watts in CFL language. But uh, they were supposedly the equivalent of 400 uh, in regular incandescent language. And they, uh, they, they were dim. And they, they did take a little while to warm up. I'll give them that. But I, I gave them 20 minutes and they still weren't. So I swapped out some of the 75s in there. And that was okay. That was a little better. And then I realized that, hey, I can get some hundreds, the equivalent of hundreds, uh, which I think ended up being about, uh, oh, I don't know, maybe 18 watts. Um, but it was 1,600 lumens at 3,000 K. So I'll show you that shot again. So each one of these guys is, uh, is 1,600 lumens. And then each one of these guys, th three on the left, three on the right, are, um, are 110. Oh, and you know what? You can't see it, but behind this light right here is another fixture across the room that I bet would have illuminated and gotten rid of this shadow. Um, I forgot to turn that one on today. I was so excited about the new lighting. Okay, and yes, that is the side of the table. That is the side of the table right there. Um, so 39 bucks from Amazon. That included shipping. Um, I had to replace the bulbs. The bulbs were on sale at the local uh, home center, about under $10 each for the 1,600 lumens, and uh, I think it was a, a, a deal. Tommy's saying in chat that he got uh, some of these lights along with a green screen for 30 bucks from somebody that, uh, from a photographer that was going out of business. And Kevin says it looks better. Well, you know, part of that might be the, the facelift I've gotten here, Kevin. You never know. Um, so, how, what's the difference? What the, I think the difference is, and the, the difference really is that it helps the camera because cameras don't typically do well in low light. Um, they, they, it's, it's like, it's like a 60 year old guy. I don't do well in low light. You know, things are a little fuzzy. I, I, I can't see as clearly. Um, so in, in these cases, um, what we want to do is we want to get more light in so that the camera can get more detail and clarity. Now, do you really want detail here? No, you don't. In fact, if, if you ever watch Fox News and you watch the Bill O'Reilly show, you'll see that he's a little fuzzy in the picture. They don't have very good lighting or focus on his cheeks because he's probably got all sorts of wrinkles and stuff right there. But the reason I do it is to illustrate the, the, the benefits and the, and what's the right word for it? To, to illustrate the, how good it can be. And again, this is an inexpensive camera, inexpensive lighting. Um, this is a, the kind of setup that anybody can, can make if they can throw a couple hundred dollars at it. Um, you know, inexpensive processor, at least an old processor. I, I, I was building some um, PCs for uh, a, a, talk sh a new tech talk show clone um, pro prototype that I'm working on. And, uh, you know, I, I just got some more 2600Ks. I had some motherboards sitting around for the 2600Ks, and so I was able to pick those up, you know, I think probably 30 cents on the dollar. So maybe it was, uh, you know, 100 bucks when it used to be, what, a 289 $300 processor. Um, yeah, Anderson's ch ch saying in the chat room, photography is all about lighting. Uh, it's, called, it's, it's called painting with light. And, uh, and yeah, that is the idea. So the more light you can get, I think the, the, the better your image will be, assuming that you've got a camera 
capable of producing a half de decent image. Now, you want to be careful, and that I'm not an expert in this area, so, so please understand that, but you do want to be careful and not mix your color temperatures. So you don't want to use the bright white daylight, uh, the 5000K bulb, with the 2300K warm white bulb, because you're going to end up with a weird kind of combination. Um, and then you'll want to remember to set your camera if your camera has a Kelvin setting for the appropriate Kelvin temperature, or at least, like me, the, 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 the quick and dirty way, uh, set your white balance so that it picks up something that's close to, uh, to what's, what's real. And for me, I just took a piece of white poster board and set it here in my chair, focused on it, and then hit the auto white, I mean, hit the, the custom white balance, and there it goes. Um, so somebody's saying in the, in the chat room, lighting theory, no mixing around. Yes, that's right. And somebody else says you can turn the umbrellas around. And, and I tried that at first, and what I found was that uh, I was getting a lot of direct light because the, uh, the bulb uh, was, was shining on me, and I was trying to get more of a diffused light. Part of it is, you know, wearing glasses. Um, I'm trying not to have, you know, you can see right there the reflection of the bulb. Um, and I, I'm trying to avoid that, and so I thought by having diffused light, and let me, let me cut to that one more time, by having the diffused light here, uh, that would help not have the, the spotlights on my, on my eyes. And I think, you know, for the most part, as long as I keep right in here in the center, we're pretty good. If I turn too much to the side, um, I'm beginning to get that definitely to this, this side. Um, all right, and everybody in the chat room says, oh, you need to turn the umbrellas around. Well, I, 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 I might try that again. Um, 180 degrees, that's right. Yeah, and I think that's in a photography studio. That's, that's probably how they would do it. Um, and they flash them and diffuse them like that. But hey, the bottom line is, it's what works and what works for you. And uh, if you think it looks good and your wife or your best friend thinks, thinks it looks, looks hey, your best friend will probably lie to you, but your wife will tell you the truth because she doesn't, or your spouse, let me put it that way, because they probably are not enamored with all the time you're spending on this. Okay, moving right along. We've killed, killed that horse far too long. Um, I have discovered a new magazine that I am really, am not welcome, uh, a new magazine that I think is really going to be worthwhile. If you are in the church streaming, if you're streaming for, uh, for worship or other parts of churches, um, and unfortunately the, the title here is, is in chroma key green, uh, so let's see, it's called, it's called Church, it's called Technologies for Worship, and uh, it's a free magazine, uh, and you can go to TFWM, so that's Technologies for Worship magazine, tfwm.com, and sign up for it, and they've got, uh, you know, some things that don't have anything to do with what we're doing, um, well, but they've got a nice thing about lighting, They've got something about uh, a switcher, and they've reviewed uh, a piece of software. Was it was it Wirecast they reviewed in here? Um, and then they have some some case studies of churches that have done different things. Um, so I commend it to you. Uh, Technologies for Worship magazine, tfwm.com. Take a look at that. I think you might enjoy it. Other thing, wanted to. Uh, Oh, let's, golly gee, what shall we do? Let's, um, let's use, shall we use our JAWS transition? Let's do it. Martin, Martin was so great to make this, and, and uh, I have uh, turned down the audio on this, so we'll, we'll have to see if this will do. So we'll go to the, uh, the project section of our uh, show today. You ready for that? Here we go. Yay, now we're into the project section. And this is, oh, I don't have my overhead cam set up. That's what happens when you rebuild your PC. You pull everything apart, and I haven't hooked everything back up. This is a, um, it's called a battery plate, and it's intended to mount on the back of a small monitor, hence the four, four screws. 
and it has the connections on it for the battery that I use in my old um, Canon DSLR, the um, 20D, I think is what it's called. And so that I can use that battery and power the monitor that is in our project with this battery plate. The battery plate cost me about $12, I think. It's uh, from manufactured by Elvid, E-L-V-I-D, and it's the CMP C511A battery plate. But you can get them to, to match all types of batteries. So if you've got a Canon, um, uh, you know, a GL1 or GL2 that's got some batteries left over that are still good, you can get a mounting plate that'll match the battery and that you can use to run your monitor. And so um, next week or the week after, um, hopefully we'll have it all together in, in one place. I need to get one more piece in order to have it fully functional. But uh, it's gonna, and this has even got a one-year limited warranty. How about that? From Elvid. I think I got it from B&H Photo. And so it came very quickly. And uh, we'll see. We'll see. So that, uh, that ends our technology. I mean, our, <laughs> our technology. That ends our project portion. So let's uh, go back to the show. And for some reason, when I do that the second time, the audio doesn't work. How about that? How about that? We'll work some more on that. Um, and we are not going to have time to run the tu the uh, tutorial on the uh, the shortcuts. Um, let me let me sidetrack for a second since we're not going to do that and talk a little bit. You knew you knew this was coming. You knew this was coming. I have to talk just a little bit about NDI. That's new new text. Network device interface. That this is the this is the big deal, um, the big deal. This is the game changer. I, 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 it's got. Let me put it this way. This has the potential to be the game changer, and I've I have watched other people do it, and I've talked about it with other people, and I've listened to other people, and I've read everything I can read about NDI, and this morning, I did it. For the first time myself here in the studio and it was pretty darn awesome now it wasn't anything fancy you know vmix is not the vmix 7 i don't have a special edition of vmix hint hint martin sinclair are you listening i don't have a special edition of vmix i don't have vmix 17 beta it's not supposed to be out till a couple weeks before NAB, so we're looking at least, at least another month or maybe six weeks. Um, but I was able to install the NDI different pieces to the to the puzzle on a couple of PCs here at home on my network, and it's just a it's not a fancy network. It's a you know whatever the next step down from a, a gigabit network is. It's a you know two two donkey network, two donkey bit network and uh, so I didn't have that much bandwidth um, but I was able to connect the the broadcast PC to the to the Asus um, rock PC that we talked about a few minutes ago and popped up some things on the on the rock and was able to bring those into the broadcast PC or at least able to view them I couldn't really do anything with them um, I could screen cap them, um, but that's you know that's that's not the same. Um, and it was it was instantaneous. It was literally, in, I mean, it was as quick as making a cut in VMix um, when I when I made a change in the uh, there was a um, uh, what was it um, a series of color bars uh, that I could. I could I could change different color bars and they would display on the remote PC or in this case the broadcast PC and when I would click the mouse on the on the Asus to change from one car, color bar to the other the video screen that was running here on the production PC as soon as I would change it on the the rock it would change here I mean it was that it was that quick it was it was amazing now uh, you know, it, it probably wasn't 1080p, um, you know, it wasn't live video, it was just a static image, 
but um, but it was pretty 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 cool. And I think to get it installed and working took um, about four minutes. So we're not talking about technology that's going to require, um, at least on our part, our, on the user's part, it's not going to require a lot of technical expertise. I mean, you have to be able to install software. The You have to be able to uh, start a program. You have to have all your computers on the same network. So if you don't have that, that might be an issue for you. Um, but... Uh, I was able to see, you know, I was able to see the production PC from the from the the Asus laptop, and I was able to see the laptop from the production PC, and then when it kind of came time to do the NDI thing, you know, you just right click on something and select from the available resources on the other PC, and boom, there it was. So, um, so you know, hopefully implementing that into um, into uh, VMix 17. Uh, went went really smoothly. We've seen that on a couple of shows, the January show and the February show, the fun time shows from from the VMix guys. But uh, we also saw that they they had some bugs and some glitches and some and some problems that they were still dealing with. Um, you know, bugs and glitches. I was watching prior prior to this show. Uh, there's a Wednesday streaming show from New Tech, so I, I I've subscribed to that and they send me a notice every day. Unfortunately, it comes on you know like an hour before this show. So I didn't have a chance to watch all of it, but I watched enough of it to, to watch them have audio problems and video problems. So I felt a lot better about the whole thing. So the, the NDI, uh, somebody's watch, asking in chat, can I spy on my neighbor's computer with NDI? And I said, well, if they're on your network, <laughs> you might be able to. <laughs> and Tommy's suggesting you have to change your your name from one man, one computer to one man, one network. Um, and that is, th Tommy, I appreciate you mentioning that. It, it, it is because uh, of NDI that um, I'm going to add, if I can engineer it right, and uh, we're running a little over on time, so I'll make this quick. Uh, if I can engineer it right, I want to add a second network here uh, that'll be a gigabit network that will not have internet traffic on it, so it won't uh, interfere with Skype calls or streaming, but will simply be a network where I can transfer video and audio from one PC to another. And the idea with that, the idea behind that for my purposes, is to take the, uh, the, the new tech talk show uh, clone prototypes that I'm building and let them communicate with the production PC not by physical cables, but uh, through this, through the, well, I guess it would be physical cables, but it's, it's not like I would have, you know, a video output card and a video input card to receive video um, on the production PC and they have to turn a rack around and send that video back to the other PC. So it's going to be, uh, it's going to be a little interesting to see how that all works out. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Um, and, um, uh, and for Justin, Justin, if you're watching this, I don't see you in the chat room right now, but this is, uh, it, it, this is all your fault. <laughs> you, you're the one that got me going on this, uh, putting this all together as, as a talk show uh, prototype. So we'll see if we can get this finished. We'll, we'll probably bring it to market at some point, too. So, so, that's it, guys. We have, we have run the gamut. We've gone from rants to lighting to uh, magazines to projects to NDI. Yes, indeed. And it was a bunch of fun. If you're watching live, hang out in, in, uh, because, uh, let's see, who was it? I think it's Ryan is bringing refreshments to the, uh, the, the, the post-show party today. He's a, a first-time uh, live viewer. So, and if you're watching this on YouTube, this is the point at which you can say, yeah, you're hooked. You may as well subscribe <laughs> because you watched this long, terrible, boring show. Um, oh, one other note. Yeah, I almost forgot this. I got a note from Martin Sinclair with vMix, and they have invited me to bring this show to their stage at NAB. So the second week in April or whenever it is that NAB is, on Wednesday afternoons at 3 o'clock Eastern Time, we will be bringing you this show for, live from NAB 
from the vMix stage. They'll have a vMix 17 fired up on a vMix Go and, uh, and you know, let me run the whole show right there. So hopefully if you're at NAB, um, you know, be around the vMix booth and we'll, we'll bring you on and get you on there. Anyway, it was a lot of fun having this show with you today. I hope, uh, <laughs> I hope you learned a little bit of something. <laughs> if not, at least you got the, NA, the uh, Windows 10 thing. That, that's important. Otherwise, uh, we'll catch you next week, same time, same station, all that other good stuff. Have a great week. We'll talk soon. Uh-oh. Now I don't have any audio. Ah.